I have sometimes done this next exercise first, depending on where we are. So figurative language. I love figurative language. I love what we're, uh, you're a hero, Jason. The fact that you're doing school and also uh, getting your second shot and everything else too. So hang in. Um, so uh, I love figurative language. Kids love figurative language. Um, I am going to tell you some stuff that is in this lesson and stuff that's outside of it. I'm going to get you in the way I get kids in. Okay. Uh, frequently people say, how come Shakespeare just doesn't say it, man? Why doesn't he just say, you know, just say it the way it's written? And I go, why don't you just say it the way it's written? We all speak in metaphors. We all speak in allegories. Allegories are more powerful. Uh, when you say that's bad, you're really not meaning that's bad. Um, and so one exercise that I love, I don't know if it's in this here or not. I don't think it is. Hang on. It is not. Let me give it to you. Uh, it's called um, Give Me Some Sugar, Baby. OK, uh, and it works like this. I get a boy popular, a girl popular, have him come up in front of the class. And I say, you want to get a kiss from her? I said, oh, all right, I know you don't. But for the purposes of our exercise, we're doing a scene where you want to get a kiss from her. OK, and she wants to give you a kiss, too. But you're not just going to give her a kiss, you know, and that's a boring scene. Uh, we have two hour rom-coms, you know, until we get to that kiss, right? So we take that whole time to get there. So don't talk to me about Shakespeare, you know, being boring and taking that whole time. So um, uh, just say, I want a kiss. I want a kiss. Okay. All right. You're not going to do that. Okay. So instead, I'm going to give you a line to say, I want you to say, give me some sugar, baby. And then they just go, ah, they just start laughing. You can imagine. Uh, I said, why, why are you guys laughing? Why are you laughing? I said, first of all, give me some sugar. What, what does that mean? I mean, what does that, what does that term mean? That is more powerful than give me a kiss because sugar can conjecture to anything, right? Um, again, be careful. <laughs> the kids will run to places you don't want to run. Uh, and then uh, I want you to give an answer back. Just say no, no, that will never do. Team girls. I need you to say no back to him using the same vocabulary that she used. Give me some sugar, baby. No. So not in my kitchen, sister. Uh, you're too sweet for me. Uh, baby, uh, go, go look for your mama. You know, something like that. And they'll start coming up with all sorts of lines. You can give them an assignment to keep control of the classroom and you can have them, you know, write their own lines and you can say, hey, be, you know, be careful. These are not pickup lines we're looking for. Just look at that. And then we say, OK, team boys, she just threw something back at you. So give me some sugar, baby. Uh, not in my kitchen. I'm too spicy for you. Not with this salsa. Oh, wow. OK, we can build on this salsa. You know, what taco shop do you want to? How do you, you know, let's run for the border. You know, uh, yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of different metaphors that we can get into. And then once we're done and you build that scene, you can divide them into pairs and they can come up with these scenes and and work. Uh, again, I, I caution you, they are more creative than we are and you can see how it can go. But it's also, make, uh, I, I want to make sure you all get a chance to, uh, if you want to perform these or share these, so make sure it's something that we can see and perform. And then they perform this. And then I say, OK, Shakespeare's doing exactly the same thing. Good morrow, Kate, for that's your name I hear. Well, have I heard, but something hard of hearing. You call me Catherine that you talk of me. You lie. Plain Kate, Bonnie Kate, sometimes Kate the curse. It's, they're just word games. They're just playing word games. You know, uh, it's the same thing Katy uh, Perry's doing with, you know, firework. You know, have you ever felt like this? You just throw that up there. OK, so figurative language. We're ready to go. Keywords for the discussion. I'm going to go back to the share. Oh, wait, you guys can see it, right? Can you see it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, used to working on Zoom. So discussion, literal, taking words in their usual or most basic sense without metaphor allegory. Figurative, language that's intended to create an image or an association. Example, Katy Perry's song, Firework. It's still hip. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag drifting through the wind? I started this in a class before, and they start singing. I mean, they start singing along. OK, so you know this song. Let's really analyze it, guys. Paper thin, house of cards, one blow, caving in. Those are powerful words there. I mean, really, really powerful. 
six feet under screams. No one seems to hear buried deep. I mean, they, these are really this is great Shakespeare stuff here. You just got to ignite the light. Let it shine. Fourth of July. I'm a firework. Really, really great stuff. OK, all right. So uh, how does uh, why would a poet use these images? Divide the class into groups of five or six people. Provide each group with a color. So I would take this group and I would say blue. I want you to act out a scene of something that is blue and then something that is figuratively blue. OK, so maybe you're on a beach and you're going to do an ocean and the ocean is blue. And then the next one, you have a bunch of people who are sad. OK, and I have to tell you about another acting exercise, which I love. It's demoed uh, on the videos there, but I have everybody stand up. Can you still see me? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have everybody stand up and I have them walk around the space. It's a viewpoints. Um, uh, Leslie, you know, viewpoints. Megan, do you know viewpoints? And Bogart. Yep, yep. And Bogart. So you're yep. all moving around. I call it fill the space so that people aren't, you know, tripped up with viewpoints, but they're all walking around. And then I say, I want you to walk around like the color yellow. Ah, ah, ah. You notice how um, you notice how Richard is, you know, jumping this way and somebody else is really sparkly and all that type of stuff. Why is that yellow? What is that that gives you that yellow quality? Then you divide them up into the groups. One thing that's literal, literal red fire truck and then a fire or anger. And kids really, really love it. They, they do great. So you'll see you'll see fire truck heat and then they'll rehearse and they'll perform them. Culturally, why do specific colors have abstract meaning? OK, then you'll have them up and they'll perform in the space and they'll do their thing. And then we I have them do the uh, moving to the space okay, with the quality. OK, Shakespeare's moving pictures. I hand out this sheet of paper. You can all see it. Yeah, is it all there. Mm -hmm. OK, so what you're going to do is you're going to tell do not give them the sheet of paper yet. They'll just be scared of the Shakespeare. This line right here full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Can you see that right there? OK, everyone say, oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Ready, go. Oh, full of scorpions my mind, dear wife. Dear wife. Dear wife. wife. Perfect, perfect. OK, really great images there. With your group of five people, I want you to make a performing art piece where you will act out these things. And Leslie, you're nodding your head. You've done this exercise, right? <laughs> so you're going to hold each other's hands. And you're all going to make an O. Or maybe you'll do this with an O. Or maybe one person will go, oh. And then everybody else will say full. And then you'll make a living scorpion. What's cool, if I see each of them doing the same thing over, over and over, kind of like a choral reading, I go, no, 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 no. Find ways to engage with one another. Because that team over there is going to beat you. They're, they're coming up with, yeah, can you all make a scorpion? Can you all do this? And then they show off their performing art piece. I have to hear the line and I have to see that thing visualized and created visually. OK, uh, really, really cool pieces. They watch them all of that. Then I give them the sheet of paper and I say, find one of these lines as a group and I want you to act it out for me in that same manner. OK, now notice these lines. Uh, this is. <laughs> This is Carmen's bread and butter, man. I mean, we're talking about this type of stuff all the time. Shakespeare packs him. All that glitters is not gold. The prince of darkness is a gentleman. You are not worth the dust which the rude wind blows in your face. Um, my favorite one, but they rarely find it because it's at the bottom of the page. It is certain that when he makes water, his urine is congealed ice. <laughs> um, so they go out and they find it. and. Uh, and they're debating now. I got five headstrong kids who are trying to choose which is the best line. And then I go, you got three minutes. You got four more minutes to get this ready to go because they're trying to find what is packed with the most figurative language, right? And then they perform those scenes for us. And they're really, really, really great. Not even scenes. They're just these chorally produced Shakespeare moving pictures, okay? Can you see your kids doing it? Can you see how you do it? See how you'd implement it? OK, uh, I'm going to leave this. Go back to the lesson plan. All of that is described for you right here. OK, uh, then within the lesson plan, we have here a scene from Hamlet. I'm going to let you watch it. 
This is from our production of Hamlet, which we did two years ago, year before COVID. And you'll get to see a really great performer. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep. So uh, you've got uh, that huge extended metaphor and kids understand it. They know exactly what we're talking about there. So we're not done. We've done that exercise. We're ready to move to the next one. This is where I say some of these lessons can expand to days, weeks, etc., depending on how long you want to do it. OK, so uh, here we have tomorrow symbol of recorded time, a brief candle, a walking shadow, a poor player. You click on this. It will show you this scene that we were talking about tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Uh, Macduff family, I, I this is one of my favorite scenes. It's rarely done. It's it's packed. Uh, it's harder. I think we're looking at high school with this one because this is when Macduff's children are killed. Notice the following. What had he done to make him fly the land? And well, from whence does he fly? This guy, Shakespeare, is such a genius. He loves us not. He wants the natural touch. For the poor wren, the most diminutive of birds, will fight her young ones in her nest against the owl. And then they talk about, you know, this. And he says, I, I'm sure your husband will be back. And then, oh, shoot, what happened? You still there? Yes, I'm still here. OK, sorry. Uh, my computer thought I was done, but we're still here. Um, uh, the guy leaves and then the little boy comes up and says, your father's dead. How will you live? And what does the son say? The son says, as birds do, mother. Wow. Here we are talking about birds again. What, with worms and flies? We're talking about that. And he says, you know, was my dad a traitor? And he talks to him this, and it's a beautiful scene between the two of them. And then somebody comes in and says, danger is approaching you. Danger is coming. They're coming in very, very quickly. And then Lady Macduff says, whither should I fly? I'm telling you, this is no accident. This is not Michael Barr making this stuff up. It's no accident. It's there. Whether I've had done more, the murderers come in. Where is your husband? I hope in no place and sanctified as you can find her. He's a traitor. Thou liest, thou shag-haired villain. And what does the murderer say? The murderer says, what you egg, young fry of treachery, young little tiny chicken of treachery. He's killed me, mother, run away, I pray you. And he dies there. It's a beautiful, beautiful image there. I think that scene's a little long and you have to point it out to them because it's not as obvious as the recorder scene, but some really, really great stuff. And then... They tell him over in Scotland what has happened. And he says, oh, hell kite. What, little chickens and my dam? I mean, I can just imagine Shakespeare going, oh, man, they're going to love this. Oh, chickens. Oh, 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 you know, just writing it out, getting it all out there. And now, uh, anyway. And one fell swoop. And one fell swoop. One fell swoop. Same thing. Hell kite. Hell kite. Uh, a kite is this bird come from hell. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, notice the number of times fly and fighter mentioned, and then we've got the recorders, okay? Assessment, oh dude, I do talk about it. Give me some sugar, baby. There it is, there it is. Yeah. So there's the give me some sugar thing, okay? This bakery is closed to people who are kooky like you. 
uh, they'll come up with better stuff in there. So that's that. OK, any questions about that before I move and plow into our next one? You guys good? Yeah. Good. Can you see using it? You see how you've used the tools? Um, I have to tell you, uh, you're going to find a number of embedded. Uh, you're going to you're going to say, wow, Michael Barr had this really great Hamlet thing. I can't find it. Where is it? They are embedded in their equity. Those are equity actors. And equity actors, we're not allowed to record them and use them on screen, but for educational purposes, we can. So they are hidden here in our little lesson plans here. And I've got some good news for you here at the bottom of the page, do, 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 where it says Hamlet scenes and instructional videos. If you click on that, there will be a request. Oops, sorry. Let me go back. If you send an email to education at bard.org, there are a number of instructional videos, including scenes that are embedded here, but you can have access to that and we'll send you the password and you can just get them. I have to put them in there. Quite frankly, they're hidden in a secret place on YouTube that if equity really wanted to find them, they could find them. But all you've got to do is just say, hey, can we have access to that? That also makes it possible to us to say these are being used for educational purposes. OK, cool. We're not looking for money. We're just uh, trying to protect the actors. OK, sweet. Everybody still doing OK?